In this video, we will discuss some of the WebEx calling local gateway security features. First, let's discuss the different PSTN connectivity options when using a local gateway. When a local gateway is deployed, the customer can access PSTN through their on-prem UCM as seen in option one, as a provider as seen in option two, or a TDM PSTN connection as seen in option three. As you can see, cloud PSTN options are not included in this slide since we're discussing the possible call flows through the local gateway. Cube runs as an application on a router which provides the capability to secure traffic at multiple layers. As a session border controller or SVC, it provides critical network security for VoIP services. It effectively hides and protects core UC elements. Cube is the ingress and egress point for all signaling messages and media streams. It is a demarcation point between trusted and untrusted network boundaries. In this video, I will focus on the voice layer protection, including voice application code, SIP protocol stack, media, and voice network security. Layer one or physical security, layer two and layer three security are shown in this slide for reference, but will not be discussed. There are multiple protection mechanisms built into Cube to protect against voice attacks. The left column shows some of these potential threats and the right column shows Cube mitigation methods. By default, Cube rejects untrusted SIP invites. The admin has to configure the IP addresses that are trusted for Cube or the local gateway to allow SIP messages. There are checks to make sure that the SIP packets are in the right format, while form packets will be rejected or dropped. Admins can protect against telephony denial of service attacks or TDOS by configuring call admission control. Only RTP packets with an associated SIP signaling session are allowed, which protects against RTP and RTCP rogue packets. There are mechanisms to protect against rogue by messages. And lastly, cube use of SRTP is mandatory in WebEx calling to protect against eavesdropping. To connect to WebEx Calling, the local gateway currently requires to register and authenticate with WebEx Calling. This registration uses TLS, and this is another layer of security to protect against fraudulent calls. This diagram shows the steps to register a SIP trunk to WebEx Calling. A second option to authenticate the local gateway with WebEx Calling without requiring registration will be available later this year. For the registration call signaling and media, some IP addresses and UDP ports have to be open on the firewall. Details for these are provided in the port reference information guide for WebEx calling. Lastly, please visit the following guides, which will help complement and provide more insight in what has been discussed. 